I echo John in thanking all of you for uh, coming, and I hope you can stay for as much of the symposium as possible today. Uh, it promises to be uh, good, and as John said, it's, uh, we have a mix of senior investigators, uh, junior investigators, uh, and trainees who will be presenting. And uh, what I want to do this morning is just give you, uh, just give you a five-minute overview of where things stand at the Visual Sciences Research Center and just to make things a little clearer because there's often some muddling going on between Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences and the Center for Vision Research. Uh, but most of my comments will relate to the, uh, the core grant, which uh, is being renewed even as we speak. Uh, in the process of it. So basically what makes up the Visual Sciences Research Center, this was a concept that, uh, that John came up with uh, a few years ago so that the, instead of it just being limited to the uh, Department of Ophthalmology uh, as it was at that time, uh, uh, John expanded this so that this would involve all of the different uh, uh, vision researchers in the department, and this especially uh, took off when uh, Chris Palczewski was recruited uh, uh, to be the chair of pharmacology, and he's built up a, a large group. So, with ophthalmology and pharmacology, these make up the, the bulk of the uh, of the uh, investigators. But there are still many investigators. There's some 14 departments involved. Uh, and I've just listed some of them here, pharmacology and ophthalmology, they say the largest, but there are also investigators in medicine, physiology, derm, pathology, molecular biology, proteomic center, uh, and chemistry. And all of these are listed uh, on the website um, at vsrc.cwru.edu. Uh, uh, um, so with all of these, uh, and NEI funding in particular, we have been able to generate uh, a T32 training grant and there will be a session on that uh, this afternoon uh, with uh, four of the trainees presenting and uh, also uh, the P30 core grant. Uh, just a word on the training grant. This is all, all of the pictures I'm going to take is, are taken straight from the, uh, from the uh, website. And uh, these are in the process of being updated and will be updated over the next uh, few weeks. So Suzanne Brady Calney has been running this uh, for a number of years. Uh, and especially, uh, she just renewed it uh, in the last year. And so this is good for another five years. Uh, the VSTP, uh, Suzanne will talk more about it this afternoon. Uh, uh, but it, it, uh, it, is, uh, uh, bring, it is providing funds for postdocs and graduate students for anyone uh, in, of these investigators, uh, so long as there's an NEI funded uh, uh, grant, you can apply to, to get a good trainee uh, uh, on the uh, training grant. Um, so the core grant, this is the the, the grant that, uh, as I say, I'm going to discuss this morning. Um, uh, John had run this grant basically for the last, uh, for th some 13 years with, I think, three renewals, John, something like that, during that course every five years. Uh, continued, along with this, the School of Medicine uh, has always provided uh, additional support, uh, as has the university hospitals. Um, uh, I renewed this, John and I worked on the renewal in 2006, this has been funded uh, and the funding will run out on 2012 except we're working on the renewal. So the, uh, the renewal w should come into effect, all goes well uh, in the, the spring of, uh, of 2012. Um, so it should be a smooth transition. Um, so, uh, again, there's already commitment from the School of Medicine and University Hospitals, um, and the renewal is due uh, September 2011, and there is only one submission per year, so we better get it right. So 2007 to 2012, these are the, this I'm afraid is a very fuzzy picture, but uh, these are people who are known to most of you. Uh, this is uh, Denise Major, uh, who does the hybridoma. Um, and Scott Howell, Microscopy and Imaging. These are the managers, these are the ones who really run the, uh, the, the, the show in this case. There are directors, but you know, we're just around to, uh, to support uh, in any way, but these are really run by the managers. Uh, 
Kathy Dollar in histology, uh, Anna in, uh, in genotyping now and molecular biology, although it's 99% genotyping these days. Uh, Katie and uh, Heather Butler are not, uh, Heather Butler is not shown here. They're involved with specialized animal resources. Uh, Don Smith has been running the tissue culture lab for a number of years. Uh, ben Lian Wang uh, is, is doing the proteomics. And this is our group. Uh, this will not change uh, a whole lot. It will change uh, in one way, as I'll show you. Again, you go to the, uh, the website, and you'll find out about the histology core. You'll find out about the microscopy and digital imaging core. This is Scott uh, taking a rare moment of solitude. Uh, it usually resembles uh, this situation where you know, Scott is crowded out of his room. Uh, it is very heavily used, uh, not just in the, the uh, lab over in uh, pathology, but uh, also the, uh, 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 it's used throughout campus, and Scott uh, is master of most of the, micro most of the micro microscopes around campus. Uh, Anna has been running the molecular biology core uh, for the last year and a bit, and uh, has processed, I'm not sure, it's probably up from this, but some 2,000 samples per month. Very heavy output, um, specialized animal resources core, um, Here's a picture of Heather, a picture of Katie, uh, and uh, they provide an essential ser uh, service in breeding and uh, taking tail snips over to Anna for genotyping. They work closely together. It's a very, very um, uh, heavily used um, module. Tissue culture and hybridoma module, Denise and Don are involved in this. Also, all of these are very heavily used. Proteomics, um, Ben Lian has been running this from the, through the last cycle, has done an outstanding job, uh, and that is also uh, well used. So things change for the renewal, and this is, this is important that you realize it because uh, uh, we have to be quite um, considerate of what's involved. The biggest change is that there's we only have active R01s, NEI R01s are all that count uh, in this case. So there's no KO8s, no R21s, no R24s. All of those were included uh, in the 2006 submission. Uh, also, no no-cost extensions on the R01s, so it has to be active grants with, with further years of funding. What it means is that instead of applying for the two and a half million, we can only apply for the two million in this case. So obviously this is not a punishment just on us, but it's the, these rules have changed. And when I was on study section uh, a couple of months back uh, to review those, um, it was clear that everyone was was applying for um, uh, fewer grants. So the upshot of it is that we need to reduce the uh, the submission by a single module. Uh, and so the 2012 to 2017. Um, Grant will look like this. Uh, we will still have tissue culture hybridoma, microscopy and imaging, histology, genotyping, uh, and we're going to expand the specialized animal resources to include uh, a visual function uh, um, part of the, uh, of the resources. Proteomics will not be included uh, in the resubmission, but Ben Lian is still very actively involved in the Center for Proteomics, uh, and her services uh, are still going to be available for those who, uh, those who want them. Um, so the visual function, this is still a work in progress. I'm working closely with, with Tim and will welcome any input from those who are involved. Uh, basically, Heather and Katie are being trained to work with most of these, uh, these uh, functions. And so we have ERG, uh, an optimoter to look at visual function. Uh, we have OCT and SLO uh, to, uh, to look at uh, visual uh, imaging uh, in animals. So this is what it's going to look like. Uh, we will be coming to you for updates on funding, publications, collaborations, updated biosketches in the NIH format. This has been uh, in progress for a couple of years now, but we still see biosketches in the old format. And basically, you need a one paragraph description, and this is a chance to say how your, uh, your res how the, the core has uh, contributed to your research, and you can only f cite 15 
uh, publication. So finally, um, this is important, the administration uh, of this. And Angela has done uh, a considerable amount of, of the work already. You've all received uh, emails from her. Uh, many of you have, uh, have uh, filled in her questionnaire, and we thank you for that. Uh, Nancy uh, Vitali just started uh, and replaced Sarah Chehi. There's Nancy sitting outside at the desk. Uh, and she literally started on Monday and jumped right into this. Uh, so they're the main people who will, be, who will be involved in the administration. They're the main people you'll hear from. And please respond to them uh, when you do. Uh, John and I uh, are also available. And feel free to contact us at any time. So again, I thank you for, uh, for attending today. And uh, we'll seek your support as we, as we go forward uh, with this. Thank you.